Miss I Want My Privacy has decided not only to launch the podcast and talk to Serena Williams about how rough her life is, um, but she gave an interview with some magazine called The Cut um, in which she once again rips on the royal family. Now, the only reason we know who you are is because you married into the royal family. No one knew you as backup girl number 40 on Howie Mandel's game show. And nobody but a few people in Toronto knew you from your show, Suits. We were all focused on the hot guy who was the lead in all of the advertising, but we never clicked in to watch the show. And you, we knew you because you married into the royal family, which you now cannot stop bashing. Just for the record. But now she wants to, in this interview, she compares herself to Nelson Mandela. She, um, she, she talks about how she's made an active effort to forgive the royal family that made her a star and gave her a castle and made it possible for her to, for her to live in a $16 million Montecito mansion. And um, she talks about her husband only referring to his family with a, quote, vocal eye roll, right? So she's openly discussing how her her husband can't stand his family either. She also suggests, here's the capper, that the, fo- that the tabloids, the, the press corps in Great Britain has been calling her son Archie the N-word, okay? Who? When, where, explain, same reaction as her Oprah interview, right? That there's some raging racist within the royal family who allegedly want to know how brown her child was going to be. Uh, Okay, so all of this gets dumped in the cut. I'll read you just one of the quotes. This is a written interview. It's not a soundbite thing. She recalls a moment from the 2019 London premiere of the live action version of The Lion King. I just had Archie. It was such a cruel chapter. I was scared to go out. Why? You you had like armed to arm security everywhere paid for by the royal family. Like, why? What? You, what? Then she goes on to say a cast member pulled her aside from the show. He looked at me and he's just like light. And he said, I just need you to know when you married into this family, we rejoiced in the streets the same as we did when Mandela was freed from prison. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any end to this person's narcissism? Uh, I read this because it was on the list of topics that we got, Megan. And <laughs> I mean, I kind of recommend it because it really is a window into how vapid and incredibly boring um, and <laughs> contentless this person is. Although I really did like her earrings. She looks amazing um, in all of the pictures. <laughs> but uh, on the side of the article, there's like other links you can click to that are 39 pairs of sneakers to upgrade your wardrobe and 14 luxury candles that are worth it. And <laughs> I totally clicked on both of those links because those are a lot more interesting than she is um, there. She she really is um, empty. Yeah. And but full of allegations about racism that she cannot support, uh, Emily. This the one that she that I just referenced was um, why she's talking about releasing photos of her child, and she's mad that if you're part of the re- royal family, you're supposed to release them first to this group that's the UK media pool, I guess. And she doesn't like it because it includes the British tabloids, or I don't know, it includes some people who don't like her. Why would I give the very people? that are calling my children the N-word, a photo of my child, before I can share it with the people that love my child. Who called her child the N-word? I mean, like, if you want to scrub the internet for the nastiest comments about you and your child, you can do it. I can do it right now. I can list you the worst things in the world. That doesn't, that's not representative of the media writ large to where you give an interview and make it the defining characteristic of your relationship with this group. Well, exactly. And it's so incredibly unhealthy. We see this happening from the left constantly with the definition inflation. They blow up things that are wildly beyond their proportion to make the country, to make the West seem so much worse than it is, which is actually really tragic because we have made so much progress in such a short amount of time that to rewind the clock and blow this out of proportion is actually like a really, really messed up thing to do, especially from somebody whose success is built on the fact that they are an African-American that was brought 
brought into the British royal family and was thus treated, uh, especially in the American press. There's a difference between the American and British tabloid circus for sure. But in the American press was absolutely feted, was treated with the most like love and kindness. You see that in the cut article where the author writes the sort of stream of consciousness admission that she was worried that when Megan reads the article, something might be unintentionally interpreted as a dig or an insult. And for a reporter to say that and to proudly put it in their article is such a statement on where American journalism has gotten. The reason that Meghan Markle has deals at Spotify and Netflix is because the press treats her so kindly that those places know they can count on PR exactly like this. When they were making that deal, they were like, oh, hell yeah, we can get the cut to put her on the cover and write something really nice about how interesting she is when to Eliana point no it's no surprise that suitcase girl number 40 has absolutely nothing interesting to say nothing of of substance to say about anything um she's it's just all stale vapid uh, progressive vaguely progressive sounding talking points like so many people i am eating healthier these days and that is the reason why i love good olive oil and by good i mean fresh Olive oil packs the most flavor and healthiest nutri nutrients when it's fresh from the farm. Did you know that? You probably just grab it off the grocery store shelf like I was doing. And that's the problem though, okay? Because supermarket olive oils are not fresh and that actually makes a difference. They can sit on the shelf for months growing stale and kind of lame. You don't even know that there's another gear olive oil can shift into. And that is why I love my olive oil direct from small award-winning farms thanks to a guy named T.J. Robinson, also known as the olive oil hunter. Now, when I first tasted T.J.'s farm fresh oils, I fell in love with them. First, they sent me a bottle. I was like, mm, olive oil, it's kind of all the same. No, no, it is not. You got to put this stuff on anything. Put it on salad, put it on veggies, pasta, meat, fish. You will taste the difference. As an introduction to T.J.'s fresh pressed olive oil club, TJ is going to send you a full-size bottle. It's worth $39 of one of the world's finest artisanal olive oils, fresh from the new harvest, for one buck. One dollar. That's all he's going to charge you, and that just covers his shipping. Best of all, with TJ's club, there's never a commitment to buy anything, now or ever, and you can cancel your membership at any time. So get your free $39 bottle for just one dollar shipping and taste the difference freshness makes go to harvestfreshnow.com that's harvestfreshnow.com for a free bottle and pay just one dollar shipping harvestfreshnow.com hey thanks so much for watching if you like what you just saw hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes